the vendor cross reference is just to be able to know who your vendors were or, and, and what they're calling the items. The traceability is every is is the delivery from the vendor, the specific lot of product, which could be serious a, a series of products, but it's all one lot. And then as that lot's dispersed into different production runs, yeah, out through out through the shop to the customer. Growing a business requires a holistic approach that extends beyond sales and marketing. This approach needs alignment among people, processes, and technologies. So if you're a business owner, operations, or finance leader looking to learn growth strategies from your peers and competitors, you're tuned into the right podcast. Welcome to the WBS Podcast, where scalable growth using business systems is our number one priority. Now... Here is your host, Sam Gupta. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the WBS Podcast. I'm Sam Gupta, your host and principal consultant at the independent ERP and digital transformation consulting firm, Elevate IQ. While ERP consultants might put all processes and food verticals under one umbrella, There are massive differences among these verticals, and some of these verticals require substantially different capabilities. The food vertical that also caters to growers and processors are very different from plain vanilla food distribution. Grower accounting is unique, and we require DST accounting as well. So which customers would be the right fit for FT and BC food? In today's episode, we invited a panel of industry experts for a live discussion on LinkedIn to conduct an independent review of Aptine BC Foods capabilities. We covered many grounds, including how the needs of growers differ from other food and beverage companies and why you would need grower accounting built as part of the package. We also discussed concepts such as catch weight, scale integration and the compliance requirements around weight management. With that, let's get to the conversation. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's show. And if you are joining for the first time, this is part of our industry series for which we meet every Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern. We review one vendor or the solution from the ERP community. And today we have a solution called Aptine bc food we have had the series of food i guess so today we have bc food they are also from aptine so we are going to touch on this from many different perspectives including comparing other solutions in the aptine portfolio before we do that we are going to start with everybody's intros i am going to start with my intro if you don't know me sam gupta principal at Elevate IQ. Elevate IQ is the independent ERP and digital transformation consulting firm. On that note, I am going to move to Andy for his intro. Thank you, uh, Sam. My name is Andy Pratico. I've been involved in ERP software for small to mid-sized manufacturers for all my life. I, uh, I'm in Vancouver, Canada, but I lived in the U.S. for 10, 11 years. And I've worked with manufacturers all over North America, over a thousand for sure. And uh, I also have a published book that helps companies uncover the truth about ERP system before they buy. Thank you very much. and looking forward to the show today. Okay, amazing. Thank you so much for being here, Andy. And uh, if you're in the audience and joining for the first time, make sure you guys post your questions and comments. We typically try to cover them during the show. If you run out of time, then we will make sure you receive your answers or Andy's jokes. I don't know what you are going to get, but you'll get something from us. <laughs> you'll get something. <laughs> you'll get something from us. Um, okay, so this one, App Team BC Food. Um, and Andy, I mean, we have discussed a lot of different solutions from Aptine. I don't know how many are left now. Obviously, they are acquiring. The list like goes crazy. on and on. It's like, you they, know. They, they probably now have the longest list. I mean, N4 used to be uh, the top, uh, I would say, overall in terms of the solutions that they used to carry. But now, probably it is Aptine. They have broken record for pretty much everybody in the market, including ECI, Epicor, they have acquired a lot as well. I, I'm not sure if there, any of them are in a race to who has the most quantity of products. I'm not sure that's something you want to brag about, but you could be right, Sam. Yeah, yeah. And maybe somebody is bragging about that. 
you can brag about pretty much anything in the ERP community, right? Right, about, right. Some so new that's big. Than everybody else. <laughs> Right. <laughs> doesn't that cost you a lot for R&D? Diversification and strategy? Go ahead, Sam. Show us your stuff. Any big number is supposed to be good, Andy, okay? I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even if it is negative. That's what, that's what Sage says, right? Because it depends on the number, it's better. The bigger yeah. the number. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, their numbering scheme is definitely very interesting, the way they like to number. I don't know how much they are following. On that note, let's uh, discuss on this one. So BC Food is very interesting and the reason and what app chain has done overall from their corporate strategy in acquiring these add-ons. And by the way, this is also BC add-on and that's why it is actually called BC Food, <laughs> which makes oh. a lot of sense. Just Food was also business central add-on. So what they have done is they have tried to monopolize the market in the business central community so obviously they have their own food product product that uh, can be standalone erps and then they have acquired a lot of different add-ons on top of business central business central in general was very successful in the food market just because of these add-ons business central as such does not have the process manufacturing capabilities or the food centric capabilities uh, but just because of these add-ons, it was really, really successful. And F team in general, they like to target either the DTC market or food and beverage. Uh, that's where their majority of the products are. There are some products which are going to be in the discrete manufacturing, for example, made to manage, Accenta is more in the apparel and retail space. But for the most part, the majority of the acquisitions that they have done are really a very food and beverage and DTC centric uh, and that's why they wanted to actually monopolize this market as well and that's why BC food now when you compare BC food with just food and by the way there is another layer that I want to actually touch on when I uh, compare the BC food as well as just food so Andy I, I don't know how much you know about the food space overall uh, <laughs> in the food space as well there are many different layers okay so when you talk about, let's say, just the food distribution, it's a very different space. If you compare all of the solutions that are targeted, let's say, for food and beverage verticals, for example, let's say, Aptin Ross, okay, Aptin Process Pro, as well as then they have Aptin Just Food and BC Food. I think they could be very, con- okay. Oh, yeah. So the clear differentiator are going to be one are these two, the Ross and Process Pro, they are more of the standalone ERP solution than just food and BC food. They are the add-on on top of Business Central. Now, when you look at the, even the, just purely from the industry perspective, I don't think they would like to position either Ross or Process Pro for the markets that are covered by BC food. And that's why they have these add-ons as well as the products that they are carrying. For the most part, if you look at the, the data model as well as the product architecture of your BC food product, the interesting layer that it has is it's targeted for growers, okay? And growers have very different needs than your pure play distributors. So right. when you get into the, the patches such as your agriculture as well as grower, that's a very different space in general. So none of the products that we have reviewed so far are probably going to be fit for the grower. Now, in general, Microsoft does very well in the agriculture space because they compete head-to-head with Sage, and Sage is very strong in agriculture in general. They were always very strong just because of the compliance requirements, um, just because of the uh, the accounting requirements that you're going to have for the agriculture. You know, Sage was always, always very, very good. Uh, and Microsoft was very good as well. And that's, they had many different products. So that's where this whole concept is coming from. Why BC Food has a lot more grower functionality. And they require very unique capabilities. If you don't have those capabilities supported as part of your out-of-the-box ERP capabilities, most likely your ERP system is going to struggle. So these are very similar capabilities as you are going to require, let's say, for not-for-profit. These are similar capabilities. The DSG accounting is very similar as well. There's a very different accounting methodology for a very specific industry. In this particular case, this is called grower accounting, and we are going to see layers of how grower accounting differs 
from the other patches. And that's why, again, it's a very small niche. Uh, from very targeted market. Very targeted market. You require training and the certification. Uh, if you're a CPA, if you want mm. to consult in this space, for example, let's say if you compare this with construction, construction also requires very specific CPA training if you are practicing in the construction market. Mm. So if you look at and the best way to understand the ERP market is going to be, okay, understand how CPA curriculum is structured because that drives the ERP market as well. So uh, in the CPA curriculum, you are going to have the construction track. You are going to have a little bit of grower track. You are going to have not-for-profit track. So these are very unique accounting um, tracks that CPAs have to go through if they are going to be practicing in these industries. But let's say if they are not from these industries, then you can live with the plain vanilla accounting standard. You know, obviously, there are some layers in the professional services space as well when you get into the ASC 606 as well as the subscription-based business models, then it gets into very different space as well. But grower accounting is very unique. That's why there are only very few solutions in the market that can support the needs of growers. And that's where your cannabis is going to be handy as well. Okay, when you look at the cannabis space, the whole idea of cannabis was to support the needs of the growers. In general, when you look at the grower market, there are going to be three different entities that are going to be prevalent. Number one is going to be grower. Number two are going to be processors. And number three are going to be retailers. These three are very different businesses. They require very different capabilities. BC food uh, is going to be relevant when you are going to be looking at your grower market as well as your processor market but it's not going to be as great fit for the retailer sometimes if the business is going to be significantly vertically integrated in general bc as a product can support your retailer market it has all the bells and whistles that a retailer is going to require uh, but let's say if a business combines all three then obviously this is going to be a great fit if your just food may not be as great fit because that is not going to have the layers for the growers. So that's a real difference. Uh, Andy, any comments there? No, I'm forward to it. Okay. The competing solutions in this space are going to be Sage X3 uh, is very strong in agriculture. They mm. are going to have that functionality. Uh, Microsoft BC is obviously strong. That's why it is here. And then I think you are going to have the Microsoft Dynamics FNO as well. They are going to have these capabilities uh, because Microsoft, again, does very well in the agriculture space. SAP, not sure if you are going to have anything out of the box. For Hana, you mean? I'm not sure if they are going to have anything out of the box, to be honest. Okay, you hmm. might get something from partners, but I don't know if they target the agriculture, agriculture market. Uh, from their corporate marketing perspective. Oracle is definitely not here. So there are very few solutions that are targeting the agriculture market. Uh, and sometimes you are going to find a lot of mom and pop in this space as well, just because of the uniqueness. When you get into, let's say, the uh, poultry farms, poultry agriculture, <laughs> okay, fishing. That makes sense. Yeah, it, it, it's it's very, very unique. Um, yeah, all of those verticals are very unique. Seafood is very unique as well, by the way. Or maybe like eggs. Yes. Yes, yes. X and again, you know, when you are looking at poultry farm and the X is a very different business model, then your the you I don't know whether you want to call it as poultry manufacturing. I think that's what they call, to be honest. Okay. <laughs> I think so. I think so. They they do call that. Really? Um, yeah, I mean they go through the manufacturing process, that's my understanding. They do, but I just figured it sounded like it'd be more for this type of a product. Poultry, I'm not sure if this is going to be a great fit because in the mm. case of seafood also there are a lot of nuances there a lot in of terms regulatory of compliance obviously. regulatory compliances as well as uh, in these spaces you are also looking for operational integration so scale integration is very common in general across these but then you are also looking for the operational technology integration when you have to let's say spray the farm and that is actually going to drive your yield. So sometimes you need to have the inputs. Sometimes, let's say if you look at the cannabis space, I think they have the serialization of every single tree because they have to track the whole plant across the processes. So sometimes the whole growing space and the grower space is very unique. Uh, I wish Dave were here because he would be just, able to talk with a lot more depth. Yeah, exactly. 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 Okay, Andy, if you don't have any other comments, I'll move to the 
through the slides? Yeah, no, that's great. Okay. So they have, uh, you know, called Daud, the processor ERP software, and I think they are uh, definitely calling that out. When you look at simply food and beverage, that could be misleading. So this is definitely for the food processor manufacturer or distributor, Aptin Food and Beverage ERP PC Food Edition has all the industry-specific functionality. You need to take your business to the next level, and they are talking about the grower. Now, the uniqueness that you are going to find in this is, number one, the multiple payees for every grower. And that's a very unique capability. You might compare this with, let's say, a grower is going to be what? And a grower could be, it's almost like the grant and fund accounting, the way your um, <laughs> your not-for-profit is going to work because you are tracking the PNL, I, I believe, for every grower, grower, and that's why you need to track the the payees for each of the grower. So I think that's where the real distinction is. Grower is not going to be a customer, so that's where I mean you need these business objects that are going to be part of your ERP data model. Otherwise, this one is not going to work. So here, when you look at the grower accounting, you are looking at track growers, wrenches forms, fields, blocks. So five dimensions, okay? So even if you are going to compare all of this, let's say with your entity, locations, branch, then also you are probably going to run out of the options. I can almost guarantee that uh, underneath, I think they have modeled either the locations or the entities to be able to track either whether they are looking for the balance sheet or whatever. That's how they must be doing it. And that's why I think Acumatica does decently well, I would say, in this space, okay? They are probably not going to have the grower-grower, <laughs> you know, capabilities as part of their data model. Maybe a partner has renamed, relabeled, uh, recreated the tables. Uh, I know that they were doing decently okay in the cannabis space. They had the data sheet uh, for the cannabis space, but I don't know how successful they are in that space. So that's where the real uh, differentiation is in the grower accounting. So you have five dimensions. You have the growers, ranches, farms, fields, and blocks. So some of them can be tracked using probably dimensions, but I would assume that they are probably five different levels of your either balance sheet or the PNL, and depending upon what level of requirements are. And sometimes that those could be driven by the regulatory authorities, and that's where the grower accounting becomes very, very, very complicated. Then you have, with re related details such as acres and crop, years, planting dates. Planting dates is a very unique uh, dimension right there, and I don't know how that is going to correlate with the other dates, financial period. So again, very unique capability. I think Sage X3 is probably going to have this functionality. Otherwise, you know, very few URP systems can support this. Harvest dates, again, very operational centric functionality that you are going to require and i don't know what all financial implications you are going to have with this but pay attention to that what is the how the harvest dates move so very very unique layers in this particular space and then you have the crop varieties as well and that is going to dictate that's probably going to be very similar to your food families uh, but then based on the yield so i think that's almost like a new item class so very 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 deep layers in general you can define multiple pays for every grower and that almost sounds like as if that's some sort of entity. An entity is going to have multiple vendors, I guess. And then process payments according to payment schedules. So I don't know how involved it gets, to be honest. But it does seem like very, very, very that you require out-of-the-box capabilities supported by the ERP system. If it is going to be some sort of add-on on vanilla ERP, uh, it's probably going to struggle. Then we have BC food versus just food. Grower accounting is where the real differentiation is. The solid foundation of Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central does have a lot of layers. For example, the way it does the serial numbers. Okay, it has, I guess, two or three different layers of serial numbers and lot numbers that can coexist for the same product. Again, you require these native capabilities. If you don't have those, it's very hard to just augment that experience in the add-on. Then they have ability to create contract agreements with customers and vendors. And I don't know how deep these contracts are. I think these are commodity contracts. In general, they have very, very complex clauses, the way they work, okay? They are going to have price hedging. They are going to, they are probably going to be multi-year contracts. So yeah, the whole stock market around commodity, I guess, you know, all of those contracts probably are going to be uh, in play here, the way this works. And this is going to be both ways. It's also going to be 
with the brokers that might be trading with your um, green exchange. This is also going to be, uh, you know, for the other side of the equation. So again, the contracts are very unique. So pay attention to that. Advanced item traceability features with comprehensive lot control. That seems vanilla in my mind. But the item traceability that you are going to require in this particular space is going to be very different because, again, the you have a lot more layers in general of the parties that are going to be involved in that commercial transaction. Okay, so here we have some more commentary. Any comments, Andy? I don't know. I'm just uh, having a look right now. Okay, so let me review the commodity receiving. And again, we did not see this uh, piece of functionality in the case of no. PC, just food, because this is very unique. So here they are saying create inbound receipts for your commodity inventory. And commodity inventory is very unique, the way commodity inventory works. It's going to have simple things such as your shelf life, but it has a lot more layers than simply uh, doing just the shelf life and the expiration date. I guess those two are most common in the agriculture industry, but it's going to have a lot more layers. Include a specific grower, ranch, farm, block, and associated contract values. Now, I have seen terrible, terrible ERP implementations in this space, okay? Some people, they just don't understand how involved these layers could be, how complicated this accounting could be. So what they are going to do, they are simply going to create a field at the item level, <laughs> okay? Corner, grower, ranch farm block that's how they like to implement guys don't do that okay this is a data field it cannot be handled using your drop downs if you are going to have a simple drop down you are probably going to struggle the model is not gonna okay it has to be built as part of your data model so there's a clear differentiation between a customization and the data model itself something that needs to be part of data model if it is not part of that that typically drives the customization and those are the customizations that typically fire back because again the model is not gonna the system enables you to and again if you have a rookie implementer they just don't understand the difference between what needs to be part of the data model versus what can be customized and they are simply going to just you can customize anything <laughs> system enables you to record the master information scale in scale out weights and again these are very unique piece of functionality where you need to integrate with the weighing scale because each time you are going to weigh. So this is a similar problem as catch weight as we had discussed last time. But now I have some more commentary on the catch weight as well uh, in terms of how catch weight works. Um, go ahead, Andy. I was going to say that, uh, you know, the whole point about scale and scale of weights is just, you know, usually these companies have uh, very large volumes of these products and they'll have electronic scales. And when they're delivering them, they'll, you know, weigh it before they dump and then weigh the truck or the, or the vehicle again after they dump and then they go look at it, which is their the value of that weight in dollars. Yeah, and typically they are going to own the trucks and this problem exists in the mining industry as well. Okay, when yeah. you are going to get whatever material you are mining, right, when you get that on your uh, truck or tractor, whatever uh, equipment you might be using, so you are going to drive. Nobody has time to sort of go and, <laughs> you know, unload all of that material and then weigh. It doesn't work that way. So it actually goes through the weighing scale process. And weighing scale needs to be integrated as part of your ERP. If it is not, then, you know, you are probably going to have issues. So again, these processes are very deeply integrated and involved. If the ERP system does not support these things out of the box, you are probably going to struggle. So scale in, scale out is a very unique functionality. That is for the whole yard, I guess. I don't know if yard is the term I forget, Andy. Uh, I don't think they use yard. They use, so in this case, I think it's going to be a farm. On farm, you are going to have a lot of different vehicles that you need to have, and they are probably going to have the weighing scale as well. Uh, and then you have the roadside weighing scale that you, uh, you know, weigh on. Those are also there, but this is really for your facility. When you are either going to take it out or bring it in, uh, you know, you need to weigh the material. Uh, you know, as you leave, uh, what do you call ranch yard? I don't know <laughs> what they. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It, um, I mean, the unit of measure. No, not bushels. Yes, yes, yes. But I'm talking about the facility. So in the case of oh, agriculture, the compound. where they are going to have the weighing scale, uh, I don't know what they call oh, that. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, it depends. But yeah. yeah. So here they are saying obviously they need to get date and times and then use container chair 
ways to determine the true net weight of given this. And sometimes this is not going to be just the container uh, chair weight. It's also going to be the tractor and the trolley uh, or the truck that you might have. You need to account for all of that as well. Uh, you know, and sometimes what they do is they are going to do the weight of the empty tractor, then they are going to load it. And then finally, they have to receive the inventory. <laughs> So it's a fun process right there. But I mean, everything has to be integrated. Um, they cannot do this manually. It's, it's very, you know, very hard. It's very similar to like, sound terrible, but when you go to the dump. Right? <laughs> be, well, I know. but you No, know, no, 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 Andy. <laughs> That's not the right comparison. Very similar. <laughs> you drive in, they, stay, they, they weigh your truck or whatever it is. You dump your dump, whatever that is. And then the, 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 how much it weighed is what you have to pay. Actually, you are right. Yes, yes, you are right. Um, On the way back out, they weigh you again without, you know, an empty truck, you know? Yeah. Yes, yes, there's, there's, yes. There's many, yeah, there's many industries that use this this process. Yeah, the only difference is them could be misleading, I guess, you know, so I didn't know <laughs> which dump you were talking about. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was just talking about the waste scale and, and the ticket. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay, so catch weight. Catch weight is very interesting here. Uh, you know, in this particular uh-huh. case as well, the catch weight is going to be important and we have far more commentary on the catch weight in how this product is going to be dealing. Every catch weight situation is going to be different as well. So here they are saying maintain your inventory records according to two units of units of measure, making it possible to capture the exact weights of your random weight items. And random weight items is the term that they had used uh, last time as well when we were talking about meat cuts. Uh, you know, every item is going to be very unique in its configuration. Uh, exactly. So that's what makes it random. But they need to get the exact weight if they cannot get that. And this weighing scale is going to be as part of your production process. Uh, and each item needs to be measured and the weight needs to be accounted. So by the way, weight is also the, you need to have weight as part of your item master. If you don't have that built as part of your ERP system, you are probably going to struggle. If you are going to have a custom field called weight, it's not going to work. <laughs> because weight is a different, different, uh, you know, layer altogether. The way it impacts every single uh, process out there. So be careful when you are deciding, you know, what to customize, what not to customize. There are always going to be implications of whatever decisions you are making to make in the ERP system. Some things are easier to be able to customize. The other things can fire back pretty bad. You have no idea how bad they fire back, especially for these industries. The accounting and the, uh, you know, compliance requirements are so deep that you need to be really careful with the customizing. Um, with the system, you can also handle and process items according to one unit, but cost and price them by um, other, the other. Um, so this is very unique standard functionality that you are going to find in a lot of different ERP systems. They can support three different UOM. So that should be okay. But the other thing, such as weight, is probably going to be trickier in general. But here they are talking about price by the pound. Again, you can probably do that in a lot of different ERP systems. They all support three layers at least, uh, you know, at the item master. Decent sized ones, not the basic ones, obviously. They are probably not going to have a skew. <laughs> the basic, the stack field. <laughs> That's your skew. <laughs> Okay, so here then we have some more commentary on uh, catch weight. So catch weight, also known as variable weight, so we have seen a lot of different terms used for catch weight, is the exact weight of an individual food item. The most frequent application is in the case of products that vary in weight on a case-by-case basis, such as meats, blocks of cheese, fruits, and vegetables. Yes, that's right. These items are frequently sold in bulk and always priced by their weight. Again, you can read between the lines. You might say that, you know what, uh, my standard ERP system that has three different UOMs can probably handle this. No, catch weight is different. Catch weight needs to be supported natively part of the product. If it does not have that, that's probably going to be a critical success factor for your implementation. Yeah, Uh, it's it's a roadblock right there. Exactly, exactly. Um, so even if you don't have the fancy mobile functionality, you might be okay. But if you don't have catch weight, uh, good luck with that implementation. <laughs> uh, price by their weight rather than by discrete unit of measure. Uh, steaks are a good example as the price depends on how much the actual piece of meat weighs as opposed to it being quantifiable as a single steak. And again, I don't think they describe it, it, it well, to be honest. I mean, it's slightly deeper than this, uh, how they are trying to describe 
if it is going to be simply the unit of measure conversion then it's, it's still easier but catch weight is, is far more than uh, because you have to account for the weight loss etc that's when it has a lot of complications and obviously you need to weigh each of the item and that needs to be recorded as part of your inventory and the item master so each time you are going to weigh you are going to have a lot of different variances that are going to be kicking in so good luck with the transaction volume right there <laughs> one could also consider the cases of two different packages of chicken wings to further illustrate the idea because they are irregular in size and shape and vary based on how the chicken is cut and packaged after slaughter two packages with the same number of pieces could contain different amounts of chicken as determined by weight the prices of those packages must therefore reflect that difference again i think they have very simplified version of catch weight in my mind catch weight is, is even more complicated than how they are describing and sometimes you know this is probably a marketing speak they don't want to reveal all of the details otherwise you'll get confused <laughs> um and they are giving an example that you know in boxing and this is very similar to uh, your example and the they are weighing before the wrestling and after the wrestling uh, you know to make sure that they are going to be at the same level otherwise it's probably I, i don't know if there are any legal requirements but they need to be at the same weight and i think you i don't know if you experience weight loss while fighting there could be a possibility because oh, obviously yeah, they, they do they they, they do 5 to 10 pounds in a in a in a around in a ring yeah in a ring oh my oh, goodness yeah. yeah so yeah that's the real uh, problem with catch weight because you are losing the weight and they need to be in the tolerance range the tolerance um, <laughs> to be in that weight class yeah 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 otherwise you cannot fight um, or they are probably going to be penalized as well and that's why they have to measure that so this is the similar analogy for this one as well again that's a very complicated process um here then we have some more uh, commentary so here they are saying erp systems and um, help food businesses manage and um, price their variable weight products with several key catch weight management functionalities the unified databases offered by these systems make logging the weight of your goods much easier and ensure that figure remains tied to the item throughout its supply chain journey and that's another challenge i think the weight has to be part of your item master as the item is moving through your supply chain because then you have to have the reconciliation between your vendors as well because there is going to be a back and forth argument there in terms of what ways uh, you know who's paying for what and if there is going to be moisture loss uh, then it's not a fun process in general um here they are talking about advanced platforms like aptins meat seafood and poultry erp can even automate the weighing process by syncing with connected scales in your facilities removing the chances of human error and relieving your employees of a tedious manual task the this process of data capture also lets your staff catch anomalies that are outside the acceptable range so obviously they have the tolerances as well as the acceptable range but that's always not going to work because depending upon the moisture loss that you might be experiencing for a given product and thereby can't be sold in that format a cut of a cut of pork that was simply cut too small to be sold as a pork chop for instance can be removed from that line and repurposed for another so there is a little what is that called uh, the uh, uh, nda remanufacturing process i guess right when you have to send the same product uh, to the line again Re- rework uh, rework 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 sorry yeah rework so they have a little rework process going on there they are saying repurpose for another uh, but then if you are going to have the rework process then you have to probably create a work order depending upon how they are handling and how sophisticated their data model is if they are going to have a little rework process then you have to account for the inventory that is actually going <laughs> to the back of the line and then you have to go through the quality process as well whether that can be reutilized for the rework or not so again this could get very complicated in general depending upon how you have handled it and what support you have as part of the erp system very 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 complicated and by the way this is not a batch this is the individual piece can you believe this okay so you are releasing on a batch basis but then you have to account and weigh on a piece by piece basis that's 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 a lot of work you think about going to the butcher store every piece of steak is going to be a different price depending on the weight exactly 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 that's a lot of work and if you have to go through five screens of erp to be able to do that mm-hmm. good luck with that 
<laughs> no, they're not going to like that. Yeah, then beef is going to be very expensive that we are not going to eat, I guess. Well, uh, it's going to start to go bad by the time you sell it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so some more comments here. Users can make adjustments to the tolerance percentage to fine tune the step further as well. So they can um, sort of fine tune those percentages, but still, uh, that's a very involved process. Um, selling by the pound as opposed to by the case. Case is always going to be the easy. Uh, weight is always very challenging. In that. Okay, some more commentary here. Recipe management here. This is also very interesting compared to just food. So here we have batch and lot sizes, scrap, percentages, anticipated losses. So when you are going to have the yield percentages as well as anticipated losses, that's easy to handle. And that is going to be part of a lot of different discrete manufacturing processes as well. Because you are always going to have some sort of loss. Even if your, let's say, meat is going through your production line, you are releasing batches. Just, you know, the loss that you are going to have inside the machine itself it can be accounted as your anticipated losses because you are always going to have the meat let's say that is getting glued as part of your uh, machine that you cannot take out that is going to be part of your cleaning process so that's easy easy uh, you know math but when you are looking at catch, uh, catch weight it's really problematic in general here they are talking about standard batch and lot sizes as well as uh, scrap percentages and other anticipated losses empowering you to achieve greater accuracy in forecasting production output quantities then we have lot traceability here they are saying you exactly where so the material traceability and the lot traceability is going to be important as well the linking that you need is going to be at the lot level it's not going to be just at the item level so that's very unique requirement as well and that we are going to see on these screens too so here they are saying the uh, where your material came from how they were used in your facilities and what was shipped to your customers. Uh, segment customers related to a lot trace, granting you quick access to the people you need to contact in, in the event of a recall. That's where your lot traceability is going to be. Not very many ERP systems can support the lot traceability. You need to have fields at the lot level as opposed to at the item level or at the item class level. Lot is a different classification. Um, you know, lot is a group that is a very unique group that is designed for your external audience so you need to have the lot to let lot traceability meaning you need to store your customer's lot number you need to store your vendor's lot number then only you can establish the the traceability if you are going to be mixing the data hierarchy then your traceability is not going to work so you think not many systems have lot traceability um, depending upon the system in in which industry they are used not not a lot of systems can do that um, some don't necessarily store and you will see those on these screens as well. And the, uh, when you require lot traceability, you need to have linking between your lot, internal, external, customer, vendor. Those four need to yeah. have correlation at the same level. You can't correlate, let's say, some uh, systems have the item and the vendor cross-reference. Vendor cross-reference is not enough for this. Okay? No. You need to have lot no, to lot no. traceability. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's not even in relation. That's a completely different functionality. No. Yeah. So vendor cross-reference. Uh, mm. No. Vendor cross-reference is used for the traceability as well. The whole idea of vendor cross-reference. Uh, yeah. It, it just, it, yeah, not really. It's it, the Vendor cross-reference is just to be able to know who your vendors were or, and, and what they're calling the items. The traceability is every is is the delivery from the vendor the specific lot of product which could be serious a, a series of products but it's all one lot and then as that lot's dispersed into different production runs yeah out through out through the shop to the customer so you have full cradle to grave for recall traceability you know where the vendor where when you have a recall from a customer you know which lot the vendor it came from exactly and by the way i mean if you are going to have a 3pl in world it becomes even more complicated to be sure. honest uh, be because number one they are not going to have access to your system they are not going to be receiving no. in your system they are going to have a lot number but then your traceability is going to be lost because you have already lost that link you when have they to are rely on them e exactly unless if they are opening the package if they are not opening the package if the lot number is going mm -hmm. to be on part of the package and they sure. are simply sending whatever they have received then it's a different case. But typically, they are going to have their own storage requirement and pricing. For that, they have to repackage it. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, they are not going to work with you. So it becomes very interesting when you are dealing. Um, okay. So here, hold management. Hold management is very unique in this space as well. 
Okay, these are very specific pieces of functionality. Sometimes companies bundle that as part of your quality management tool. But here, these are not just the reason codes. You are going to have a real hold as part of your recall process, and you need to designate the the items uh, in your warehouse as the whole held items. It's not going to be just the you have a warehouse area where you have kept a bunch of held items. I don't think that's going to work because you have to have the hold reason codes that goes through a different QC process. So hold management is a very unique as well. Here you are going to have the uh, hold tags for each of the lot records. So again, the traceability is very complex, uh, the way this works. Um, and we have the item allergens. Uh, and here we have the assign them to your raw material. Again, very, very, very unique functionality in general. I think this was part of your just food as well. I don't think there's going to be much difference uh, in this piece of functionality. It's just that, you know, you have to have that as part of your ERP system or this is going to struggle as well. Um, yeah. Now, global trade, very unique. Okay. If you have global trade requirements, make sure it is supported by your ERP system. It's very, very involved piece of food. In this, you are tracking the entire supply chain because you need to track the global compliance. And sometimes even printing the documentation could be very, okay. And if you are using some sort of WMS GMS, typically your global trade functionality is going to reside there. So your integration could be extremely tricky as well in terms of which system is doing what and, you know, how the handshake is going to work between those two systems. So here you are talking about, uh, you know, uh, record international shipments. So again, typically in the ERP boundaries, you don't necessarily record the international shipments. Again, if you are a very large shop and you have very large international presence, for the most part, most guys, even if they have to track the international shipments, they track as the virtual warehouse inside the ERP. So that's how they track. But that is just a shortcut. It's just a workaround. Okay. When you have to get into the trade compliance issues where you cannot release certain material in a certain country, that's a very involved and deep process. Okay. That has to be supported by the, by, uh, the system itself. So here they are talking about maintain shipping containers, uh, their contents. Okay. So that the whole process itself is like its own ERP, to be honest, the way this functionality is and their contents, delivery schedules, completion dates, and more generate critical documentation such as port schedules. Okay. This schedule is going to be similar to your production schedule or the field service schedule. Okay. So you are generating this schedule for the whole port, uh, you know, depending upon how you are packing that. So you need to uh, support the whole scheduling process. Again, very, very, very deep and complex functions. Um, license plating, not many ERP systems support that. So licensing, license plating is going to be very common as well. Uh, some systems have this built as part of the system itself. For example, let's say if you look at the Microsoft Dynamics Business Central, it is designed for very complex distribution shops. So it does have the license plating, the bin functionality, very, very, very deep layers of that. If a system is not going to be designed for distribution, they don't even have all of this. Uh, okay, manufacturers don't need. Okay, but distributors, Sometimes, they most certainly not, need. not you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is warehouse management. Exactly. But I mean, their warehousing needs are not going to be as complex as the distributor because for distributors, the margins are very thin and they have to scan the whole pallet. Uh, you know, for manufacturers, they are probably shipping one a day. Let's say if they are delivering complex machinery. Yeah, it, it, yeah <laughs> you're right. But it depends. Some manufacturers are hybrid manufacturer wholesalers, right? So they got warehouses. And so. But and generally speaking, you're right. License plating is very WMS centric functionality. Exactly. And that's become that becomes very complex when you are going to be a distributor as well as a manufacturer. And if you have any other business models, such as your construction, good luck with that. Yeah, yeah good luck with that. <laughs> good luck with finding something that does all three. Yeah, I mean, you are looking at really big ERP system and they become very expensive because they are not going to have the last mile. Involved. That's correct. Uh, but you are only looking at the bigger ones. Um, here, then we have the scale integration. Scale integration is provided out of the box, which is big deal. By the way, in the scale, you have the compliance. You have the compliance at the state level. So that's another, you know, curveball right there. Uh, you know, that it's not going to be just random technical integration. <laughs> You need to comply with it and you are probably going to, uh, when you have any sort of compliance, you are looking at the re reconciliation model as well as reporting uh, to those state agencies. And again, anytime you have any sort of reporting, that becomes very complex process in general as part of ERP. And that has to be part of your ERP. Otherwise, 
you are probably going to struggle. So again, very unique piece of functionality. Uh, billbacks are very unique as well. Uh, we have not come across billbacks. Billbacks are very common when you are going to have very complex distribution, uh, you know, channel where the, you have the trade promotion and the whole trade promotion capabilities are very complex. You are going to have this functionality in the HVAC distribution space. You are going to have this functionality in the electrical distribution space. But then this also exists uh, in your FMCG food distribution space as well. The more traditional the industry, the more trade promotions they are probably going to have. And those hierarchies that you have as part of your trade promotion, that could become very complex as well. You have multi-level promotions, rebates, uh, broker commissions, payables, royalties, billbacks. <laughs> very, 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 very hard to handle. And this is where your lines between your CPQ, CRM, e-commerce, as well as ERP, uh, good luck with that integration because it's it's a load of, uh, you know, uh, handshake there when you are going to be incorporating this functionality. Uh, we don't have any comments. Andy, any comments? No. Um, okay. So let's look at the some of these screens. So this is where we are looking at the BOM and this is your recipe BOM. Okay. So here we have some very unique piece of functionality and some of them are going to be drop downs. So for example, and anytime you see a drop down, unique drop down, in general, that could be slightly easier to customize. But if you are going to have a data field that is incorporated as part of your data model, that is typically much harder to incorporate as part of your ERP implementation in general. So here we are looking at batch. When you look at the batch, batch is part of your data model. Okay, you are releasing based on batch. You are using batch as part of your whole computation. So that's another data layer that you need to have as part of your ERP. If you don't have that, you are probably going to struggle with the batch process. So you have three layers there as part of, as part of batch. This is the grouping. So you have the size, you have unit of measure. So it's almost like translation of unit of measure. But again, it's far more than that because you are going to have the yield percentages. And again, depending upon the complexity of your batch, you are going to require very unique capability. So this is where you don't want to customize it. You want to make sure that you at least have the batch capability supported as part of your ERP system. Otherwise, you will probably struggle with that. You have the versions. Version number, again, version is a very unique layer. Okay, so you might find, let's say, the revision. And there is a difference between your revision and version. And we saw that in the case of just food. They follow different life cycles. So you need to make sure both are supported as part of your recipe. Then you have the variant code. So you have the inventory, you have the matrix inventory, and then you have the versions. So again, very, very, very deep layers. It's a very complex inventory and make sure you have support for all of this. Again, BC Food has done wonderful job in supporting number one, the matrix inventory, because in this space, you are going to have the matrix inventory, but then you are going to have versions from your production perspective, from your engineering, from your product management perspective. So you need to incorporate both of those as part of your product model. Andy, any comments? No. Okay. So this is where the, the lot traceability I was talking about, Andy. This is how the lot traceability looks, okay? So this is the what? lot number, uh, you know, level. This is not item. This is lot number. So you have the item number. For the item number, you have the variant code. And for that variant code, you have the lot number as well, okay? So this lot number is correlated with the vendor lot number. Then it is also correlated with the external lot number. So you might have an internal internal lot number but then you might have an external lot number so these are two lot numbers uh, you know at the same level just with you okay then you have the customer lot number so you have four levels of hierarchy right there at the lot number level and i don't know how many erp system can support this functionality at the lot number level because they are probably not going to have even the lot management screen they might have the item class but they might not have the lot management so here we are talking about Hold region code. Hold is at the lot level as well. And you have the hold region code list. So you need all of these layers. If you don't have this, then you will lose with your traceability. So again, very, very unique piece of functionality. Um, again, the uh, your mobile functionality is probably going to be clunky, as you can see on the screen. I don't know if that has been modernized. It's fairly basic as well in general. Uh, you know, slightly more busier shops, they are probably going to require a specialized WMS, but for the most part, what you should be looking in your ERP are going to be the layers 
that need to be supported by the ERP. If you don't have those layers, even your WMS integration is not going to work. Okay, so make sure you have at least the lot uh, traceability as part of your ERP system. You have the version number, you have the wage. If you don't have that, then uh, you are going to struggle. Unless you are using ERP only for financial reporting, then it's a different case. <laughs> uh, here we have the license, uh, you know, place the grower accounting is a completely different module that they have built on top of the vanilla ERP. And in general, BC is a very friendly ERP for food and beverage distribution. But on top of that, they had to build the grower accounting functionality. So I think of the layers that you are going to be needing for this. Global trade is a unique piece of functionality. That's a separate module on top of the existing functionality. So obviously, you require a lot more layers there as well. And it has its own setup. Um, so very complicated. Then this is your sort of the TMS functionality. If you are keeping the TMS capabilities as part of your ERP, depending upon how you have designed your processes, some companies cannot do this because they have to have a 3PL. They have to have, uh, you know, if they have 3PL as part of their business model, sometimes that need to reside as part of your WM, TMS, OMS layer, depending upon your business model. Some companies might be able to keep this as part of the, the ERP. So again, your business model is going to drive your architecture and your architecture is going to dictate whether this is going to be part of your ERP or is it going to be part of your WMS. But here you are mapping the real truck. Okay, so these trucks are going to be very similar to your warehouses and you are counting the inventory on each of those trucks you are going to be releasing, you are going to be scheduling. And the reason why some companies may have to have this as part of ERP is when they are printing these schedules uh, from the ERP itself. Let's say if you want to do the trade compliance or the port, you will not be able to do that if you are going to use uh, a WMS system. It could be trickier uh, to do it from there because then you are going to get into the financial compliance as well. So is WMS going to do your financial compliance? Good luck with that. <laughs> um, okay, some reviews. Andy, you have commented. We have five minutes right now. We can cover some reviews or maybe yeah, I just have one, I guess. Let's have yeah, some just one. Reviews. Oh, just one? Okay. Yeah, just one. <clears throat> um, so here, uh, we don't have any reviews. Can you believe this for this product? So I don't know how to basically read this. Uh, obviously, this is a very well-known product. I know this product personally. But I'm actually shocked that it does not have any reviews. So I don't know if it is because of the limited number of installations or people have not just reviewed. But for the most part, you are not going to find any reviews for this product pre-acquisition post -act. So here in this particular case, this is a freelance writer is reviewing. So obviously, this cannot be trusted. <laughs> okay. Not sure if this is a paid one. Why would a freelance writer write a review? I don't get it. And yeah, again, not very meaningful. So <laughs> well, he's probably interesting. Where do you see that? Well, his title is sales consultant and title of the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, That's very interesting as well. I don't know. Uh, yes. Is and they're under a thousand, a freelance writer. That's where. OK, that's what. So, so he, he, he is freelance writer, but then he's a sales consultant and he's yeah. saying as a sales consultant. I yeah. have no idea what's going on. <laughs> And it's about what less than 1,000 employees, so it must be a customer of his. Greater a than 1,000 employees. So oh, it's greater like, than? Oh, yeah, it's not like, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's definitely big for this kind of product. Yeah. But BC has been installed for very large installations, so maybe it is okay. Sure. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. Um, okay, Andy, uh, I can take your comments. We have three minutes. Well, you know, like you, you've said it all. I mean, you know, this system has uh, got some very unique functionality, especially in the growing end. It's not just vegetables and things like that, but it can be like we talked about possibly even animals growing. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so it's got a lot of uh, very unique functionality. I can see it's very targeted. Um, sometimes when you have very targeted products, the depth is not there, but it's reliant on the BC products, so it doesn't need to have the depth. So when you are looking at the targeted products, sometimes they are actually going to have a lot more depth in general in terms of the features that you support. Um, so if you're looking at unique mom and pop. Features. Unique features, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Uniquely designed for that industry. But if you are going to do anything outside of that, and if you're looking for customization, diverse business model, then they cannot support. Exactly. Um, any other comments, Andy? Well, anything that's industry specific. Uh, you know, there's lots of systems in every industry out there, and they'll always have functionality that's very unique for that specific mm -hmm. industry. So it catches that audience right away. But commonly, the breadth is 
exactly and andy based on my personal experience as i'll tell you some stories okay so in some cases you probably want to have the industry tailored product and these are the businesses let's say if you are going to have you are going to be roughly less than a million dollar in revenue you are oh, you probably more. yeah 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 wow. but i mean they probably need some sort of erp system to be honest okay to manage their right. processes it's something very simple for. so they care for the tailored experience and the reason for that is because they don't even know how to design their skus no, they I don't know. even know how to design their bombs <laughs> they only know how to make stuff or sell stuff exactly so they need to see okay fresh 500 grams how do i <laughs> incorporate that as part of your erp that's uh, you know so that's why sometimes these industry specific products could be very handy for these founders who cannot afford a cfo uh, or right. accountant or a consultant uh, so far uh, right. but that can only take you until 5 10 million dollar uh, not after that okay amazing any other comments andy no All right guys so that's it for today if you joined for the first time this was part of our industry series for which we meet every Tuesday at 5:30 p.m. Eastern so make sure you guys are going to be here next week we are going to come back with another topic on that note thanks everyone for tuning in today thanks everybody thanks sir of course thanks Andy i cannot thank our guests enough for coming on the show for sharing their knowledge and journey i always pick up learnings from our guests and hopefully you learned something new today if you want to learn more about Andy practical head over to essoft.com it's e s s o f t.com links and more information will also be available in the show notes also don't forget to subscribe and spread the word among folks with similar backgrounds if you have any questions or comments about the show please review and rate us on your favorite podcasting platform or dm me on any social channels i'll try my best to respond personally and make sure you get help Thank you and I hope to get you on the next episode of the WBS podcast. Thank you for listening to another episode of the WBS podcast. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform so you never miss an episode. For more information on growth strategies for SMBs using ERP and digital transformation, check out our community at wbs.rocks. We'll see you next time.